Integrals are some of the most powerful mathematical tools calculus offers us. When I first learned about them a few months ago, I, like many others, was confused about its notation and what that notation was actually saying. Today, I will try to give you an intuition about this. This will show you that math actually makes sense and it's not just formulas that you have to memorize. In this video, you will learn the meaning behind the notation of integrals and two ways in which it can be represented. Let's start by thinking of a rectangle with a base of 1 and a height of some function say f of x. What happens if f of x slightly changes? Let's call this small change d f of x. For this case, the area increases. So now what is the new area of our rectangle? Well, it is 1 times f of x plus 1 times d f of x. So what is d f of x? We need to expand it to understand that. To do this, we need to look at the graph of f of x. But before that, we need to recall some points about linear equations. The formula for a line is y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope of the line and b is the y-intercept or you can say it's vertical shift. Let's consider two points on this line, x0, y0, and xa, ya. What is the change in y? That is, ya minus y0. We can find this through simple algebra. The b's cancel out, and this makes sense. No matter what the vertical shift in a function, the distance between two points will always remain the same. So, at last, we are left with ya minus y0 is equal to m times xa minus x0. What happens if xa, ya approach x0, y0? Well, xa minus x0 and ya minus y0 get smaller and smaller. As xa, ya get infinitely close to x0, y0, ya minus y0 and xa minus x0 get infinitely small. We can write this infinitely small change in y as dy and this infinitely small change in x as dx. Thus, dy is equal to m times dx. Now we can look at the graph of f of x. g of x is a line tangent to f of x. It equals f prime of x times x plus b. The slope of the tangent line is f prime of x, that is the derivative of f of x. And this makes sense. The derivative of a function is defined as the slope of its tangent line at a point. Now what happens if we take a tiny step dx from the tangent point? By how much does f of x and g of x change. Let's call the change d f of x and d g of x. Currently, you can see that d f of x is greater than d g of x. But remember, dx is something infinitely small. Therefore, as dx here approaches 0, we can see that d f of x approaches d g of x. This should make sense because the slope, that is the rate of change, of both the functions at the tangent point is the same. Therefore, a tiny change in x will result in an equivalent change in both g of x and f of x. Here, we can say that d f of x is equal to d g of x. As we discussed previously, a tiny change in a line dy will equal its slope times dx. Therefore, in our case, dg of x will equal f prime of x dx. And since d of x is equal to dg of x, d of x will equal f prime of x dx also. Going back to our original problem, we can write the total area as 1 times f of x plus 1 times f prime of x dx. This is great, but what if you were only given the derivative and were tasked to find by how much the area of the rectangle changes over two intervals? 
We can do something similar to what we did previously. From the graph of h prime of x, we can find dh of x for all points between these two intervals a and b, then sum them all up to find the net area of the rectangle changed between these two intervals. Starting from a, we see that h prime of x is just the distance from the x-axis to the value of well, h prime of x at a and the y-axis. Now, we know that dh of x is equal to h prime of x dx at that point. How can we represent this? Well, we can take a slight nudge in the x direction. We can call this nudge dx to get an extremely thin rectangle with height as h prime of x and width as dx. The area of this thin rectangle will equal dh of x. This probably will seem odd to you because how exactly is dh of x related to the area of this thin rectangle? Well, if you think about it, this is just another way of expressing the product of two numbers or variables. Look at this example. We can let y be a horizontal line and x be a vertical line. The area between these lines is just the product of x and y. Similar case for h prime of x and dx. Now we have our first iteration for our rectangle. We can take another nudge in x and get our second iteration, and then our third. And we can keep doing this until we reach b. Adding all these iterations, we get the total area of the rectangle changed between a and b. What we just did, finding the area under the graph of a function between two points, is known as finding a definite integral. And this is how we write it. The leftmost symbol, known as the integral symbol, denotes the tiny summation of dh of x from a to b. The a at the bottom tells us the lower bound, and the b at the top tells us the upper bound of this integral. The h prime dx is the expanded form of dh of x, and the statement of course equals the change in the function from a to b, that is hb minus ha. Here's another representation of this idea. Let's say we know a function k prime of x and we want to find the change in k of x between these two points. We start by taking the value of k prime of x at the first point and then making a line with the slope of that value. Let's take a slight nudge in the x direction. We will once again call this dx. And we will plot whatever change in y, which we'll call dy, at the first lower bound point plus dx. Now we will take the next value from k prime of x repeat the process and plot it next to where we had plotted the previous change. Slowly, we will start building the function k of x between those two bound points. Also, do note that the dy's and the dx look quite big here, but that's just for illustrative purposes. In reality, it would look something even smaller than this. Anyway, why is this working? Well, we are applying the same logic as we did previously. That is, a small change in x in the tangent will cause a tiny change in y, which will be equivalent to a tiny change in the main function at the tangent point. If we plot these tiny changes at different x points, we will get the main function. Here is the function k of x between those two points. One question you may be thinking is that, why did I start graphing k of x from that one particular point in the y-axis and why not elsewhere? Well, honestly, there was no reason for that. I could have started from any point in the y-axis. Since this is a definite integral, we only care about the change of the function between those points, which will remain constant despite its vertical shift. However, if this was an indefinite integral, the starting point, that is the vertical shift, 
would matter as we are not necessarily looking only for change. Therefore, after calculating an indefinite integral, we always add a plus c to tell the fact that its vertical shift can be any constant. And that's integration for you. Notice that I only focused on the understanding of its meaning rather than the computation. Its computation is a whole another interesting story, which I would highly recommend you learn through professional sources such as Khan Academy. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful.